Okay, hello everyone. How you doing this Saturday? Wow, nine one one, September eleventh. You know what? I actually I looked at my. I, I, I've got to admit, I had a sleepy morning this morning, and I took my Sabbath, my Saturday Sabbath this morning. And so the first time I looked at my clock was actually at nine one one this morning. How freaky is that? But uh, you know, as I start this, how to vote, answering your questions video. Just want to remind us all to be in prayer for the families and loved ones of those that were lost in the 911 terrorist attack in the United States. Obviously, we're standing with our friends right now, Sean Foyt. They are right there in D.C. Uh, doing this crazy, wild uh, worship event. It's probably being live streamed somewhere. But wherever you are across Canada today, I just uh, we send blessings to you from New Brunswick, 911. So I'm uh, just going to give people a few minutes to hop on here. This is a spontaneous uh, Facebook Live. And I want to just drive right into the question I've been getting over and over from lots of different angles, Facebook messages, emails, phone calls, <laughs> talking with people at church and in the day to day. And people are asking the question how do I vote in this upcoming federal election? So I'm going to give you a couple things to think about here. We've been um, actually in prayer and fasting with our team here. Many of you I know are also in fasting. I think we are on day 12 today. And so I'm going to try to be articulate, but I am uh, working with fasting brain here right now. But uh, okay, so anyway, there's only about four or five of you on right now, but do feel free. Uh, let me know where, who you are, where you're from. Do feel free to uh, share this with your friends later if they've been asking similar questions, expressing similar concerns about not knowing how to vote in this election. And uh, yeah, and also put any questions or comments down here as well. So I've actually prepared a little PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation, um, screen capturing some important websites, some um, uh, areas of the liberal policy platform, the conservative policy platform, the PPC policy platform, uh, anyone who's kind of polling above 1% on, on some of the critical issues that we're talking about. I've kind of um, prepared that for you. But this is the main question or the main, uh, maybe say, question and comment that I've been getting. People um, have been consistently coming up to me saying, you know, Faithine, for my whole life, I have voted, voted, excuse me, conservative uh, in the federal election, but I just can't get myself to do it in this current federal election because of, and it's, there's different reasons, but often it's it's something like because of, hi, Marilyn, uh, because of O'Toole's stance on the life issue or um, his lack of, or the, the Conservative Party's lack of strength in terms of uh, fighting for freedom issues uh, across Canada right now. And I, I think those are all really valid <laughs> Valid things to say, valid things to have on your radar. Um, but then people are often saying, okay, but I don't want to split the vote. Anyone who's been watching politics at all in the last couple decades will know that uh, sometimes the person that you vote for ends up leading to, if, you, if you're in a situation where you split the vote, ends up leading to the exact opposite person that you wanted to get in or party that you wanted to get in actually getting in. And we actually saw that in the last federal election where I think there was at least six uh, vote split scenarios that, um, you know, were really damaging for people that were, were wanting a certain value to be put forward. And so I'm going to break some of this down a little bit today and let you know right off, off the top, um, we are not unilaterally or I'm not unilaterally uh, supporting one party over another, um, though I do, there are certain parts of, of certain party platforms that I love more or less, but I, I personally am digging deep, uh, looking at my uh, individual riding here. I'm in uh, Fundy Royal in New Brunswick. Um, and I am encouraging other people to do the same because this is a messy election. And to be honest, I don't think there is Personally, I don't think there's a clear cut answer and um, and you really need to think deeply about what types of agendas and values legislatively that you want to see advanced in Canada. And then you need to do your homework. I'm going to try to help you a little bit with that today. Do your homework on your specific writing and find out for yourself uh, what the most strategic vote is in your particular race you're writing um, that will advance the things that you care about for real. Okay. So I'm going to share screen here for a moment. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. 
Corinne. Hi, Paul. Yes, definitely a messy time, Paul. Thank you for agreeing with me on that one. So let me share my screen here. I hope I'm going to be able to do this right window. There we go. Okay. I even did a little intro screen. Look at that, guys. Answering your questions with information. Okay. So one of the things that uh, people reach out to me a lot about is, is specifically the life issue. You know, I am pro-life. I One of the reasons I'm pro-life is because I'm just tired of seeing women's lives destroyed through unwanted abortions. I personally have friends that have been driven to abortion clinics to have been forced to have abortions that they did not want. And I personally think it's absolutely pathetic that we do not have a strong voice on the federal level that at least is pushing back and standing up for women who don't want abortions. And, um, stats will show that the majority of women who have abortions actually don't want them. So, so anyway, so that I'll just put that out there for me. That is an issue that I care about because I care about women and I do care about the unborn as well. Both of my babies were born uh, uh, before 40 weeks and in Canada, it is legal to abort a baby um, at the, at the very age that my children were born healthy, strong, and, and beautiful, I might add. So, so a lot of you do care about that issue and a lot of you are concerned um, and I've heard people actually, I had somebody say this to me this morning that the PPC party is the only pro-life party. That is a false statement. I, I, I love the person who wrote it, but I just want to debunk some stuff here. That is actually a false statement right now. We don't have a single party that is overtly pro-life. We do have some policies that are being put forward that touch the life issue though. And I want to actually dive into a couple of those right now. One is the liberal policy. Okay. So, oh man, this is brutal. So this is on page, what page is this? Page 13 of the liberal liberal policy handbook. You can, if you just go to liberal.ca and you click on read the full version of the policy, you'll get to this, but you'll see um, the part right here that is highlighted in blue, it says that the, the Liberal Party, if elected, will no longer provide charitable status to anti-abortion organization, organizations, for example, crisis pregnancy centers that provide dishonest counseling to women about their rights and the options available to them. I Anyway, th this is such a loaded thing. I'm going to have to do a show on, on just this one, on what they mean by dishonest information. Like, could you could you vet that, please, Mr. Trudeau, and prove that that's actually happening? Anyway, they're going after pro-life charities. These are the organizations that give single moms in crisis pregnancy free diapers free baby formula free baby clothes strollers car seats this is who justin trudeau is going after um he is also threatening to um pull our penalized provinces who will not fund um fund abortion in both public and uh in private facilities so for example that's been a big war here between justin trudeau and blaine higgs premier blaine higgs here in new brunswick where uh trudeau has been trying to bully the provinces into actually funding private abortion clinics abortion already happens in the hospital so there already is access to abortion in new brunswick but he's just going after this so this is a very very aggressive pro-choice policy now let's go to the only other policy that I could find that directly touches the life issue. And that was actually a conservative policy. Um, on the conservative party platform, page 48, if you go into, into their website, you'll be able to find it as well. Uh, they are actually putting forward, and I don't know why this hasn't been talked about more. I think this is an incredible strat, uh, credible policy, an adoption strategy where the conservatives will create a national adoption strategy, including an awareness campaign to promote adoption and work with the provinces to ensure equal access to adoption for all children. This would include supporting international adoption by working with other countries to align processes, speeding and easing the adoption process. That <laughs> would be amazing. I know so many of you out there, so many of you watching this now and that will be watching this later, um, you know, would be willing to adopt if the process was just easier and, and help some of these women in crisis pregnancy scenarios. Um, we would create an EI benefit for adoptive parents modeling on EI maternity benefits and increase the maximum a parent can claim under the adoption expense tax credit. So this is actually the only overt pro-life policy in any of the policy platforms. Um, now let's go to the PPC here for a moment. So this is the PPC uh, platform. I just took a screen capture right off of their website. 
And this actually isn't under the healthcare plan, um, but they do talk about under their freedom. I think this is freedom of speech. I accidentally cropped off the title, but they talk about how they would basically stick up uh, for people's rights to believe what they want to believe. You know, um, Maxime Bernier is a libertarian, so he is he is into less government, not more. And they would try to repeal uh, some of the legislation that has clamped down on freedom of speech and freedom of conscience issues. So they would kind of go at, so that does kind of touch the life issue because uh, when you look at university campuses, yada, yada, there, there has been a lot of pushback in terms of clamping down on the life voice in Canada. So it's not overtly touching the life issue, but, but it is um, generally touching the life issue. And so those really are the only life. That's the only time that life is talked about in any of the platforms. Trudeau, like bloodthirsty, like just going after it. Um, the conservatives putting forward a national adoption strategy and the PPC saying that they will fight for freedom of conscience, which um, the conservatives also do have a track record on. So, so when it comes to the life issue, you actually cannot say that there's a one party that's unilaterally pro-life. And even within both, let's, let's just talk about the CPC, the conservative party and the PPC. Let's compare them on this front. Um, in both of those parties, you are going to find both pro-choice and pro-life members of parliament. If you were to go down the list of all, all of the PPC candidates in that list, you are going to find some PPC candidates that are fully, maybe some of them even um, in support of the status quo, which allows abortion right up to 40 weeks. We don't know. We know Max Bernier doesn't think that we should allow, a Canada should allow abortion right up into 40 weeks. We know that. But we also know that he probably wouldn't um, make abortion illegal across the board either. But if you go down his list of candidates, I don't know that for sure. I'm just kind of reading the court on this one from a distance. But um, if you go down his list of candidates, some of those candidates are going to be full on pro-life for sure. And some aren't. But the one thing that both Bernier and O'Toole will be similar on is that they will both allow their caucus members to have a free vote on issues of conscience, which the abortion issue would be one of those. Probably the vaccine um, mandate issue would be one of those conscience issues. The vaccine passport issue, if that ever came to a federal vote, I'm not sure if it would because it's primarily provincial. But both um, the CPC and the PPC are probably going to be similar on freedom of conscience votes and allowing their members of parliament to bring forward bills that they want to bring forward. Like I'm going to talk about Kathy Wagenthal's bill. So Kathy Wagenthal brought forward really, um, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there. I, I do have fasting brain right now, but uh, I believe she brought forward the only bill um, touching the issue of abortion in the last parliament. Yes, she did. Um, C-233, which if it would have passed, would have made gender side, which is the abortion of a baby on the basis of its gender, uh, illegal. Okay, so O'Toole allowed a free vote in his caucus. Okay, at the time of this vote, from what I'm understanding, he was at about 119 individuals in his caucus. O'Toole himself voted against the bill. So he voted in a pro-choice way. But 82, so do the math on this, <laughs> 82 of his members of parliament in his caucus, that's 82 out of 119, that's just shy of 70% of the caucus, uh, an overwhelming majority, an overwhelming majority of O'Toole's caucus actually went against him, voted for life, and he let them, he let them do that. And so I want I want to shake and break this down for you in, in a moment, OK, because these were the 82 members of parliament and some of them might be in your riding running again. These were the 82 members of parliament that pushed back against O'Toole on a conscience issue on the issue of life that cast a vote against gender side. And I want to say this, that also did it at great potential personal cost, because we know that both within the caucus, you know, from the the, the leader and the, probably the staffers around the leader and both the media were very, um, let's just say not in favor of C233. In general, there's a hostile climate out there on this one. But in spite of that, 82 out of 119, how do you know how somebody's going to vote in the future? 
well, just look at how they voted in the past. And so I want to say that I believe that personally that these 82, if the life issue is something that is one of the issues that you care about, maybe it's the primary issue you care about. Maybe it's not. Maybe the freedom issue is, is more what you care about. And uh, but this is down there on, on the rung somewhere. I, I want to propose that I personally believe that these 82 members of parliament absolutely deserve our support, that they deserve the support of people who agree that Kathy's bill was a good bill to vote for. And so I'm not going to go through the list of all the names here, but just to let you know, I'll scroll through this. This this is the list. Now, what is the, the green highlighted text? OK, the green highlighted text is where you considering this information and knowing this information matters most. What I mean by that is the people in the writings, for example, we've got Tamara Jansen right here. And I'm actually going to flip to another slide here in a second to show you what exactly is happening in Tamara Jansen's writing right now. Tamara Jansen stuck her neck out on this one and she voted for Kathy Wangenthal's bill. She voted for life. Tamara Jansen is in Clover Langley City, Cloverdale, excuse me, Langley City in British Columbia. And Tamara Jansen is what we would in what we would call a swing riding. So what that means is that this this election, she may win it or she may not. It's actually within a few percentage points right now. And most political pundits will say that it's actually the swing ridings that will determine the outcome of this federal election. So it's going to be these most likely these teal ridings here that are highlighted on this list of 82 MPs that voted against gender side um, that most likely will determine the power construct of the Parliament of Canada. I want to say this, and I put this in the description of the video. There are 338 members of parliament. That means 338 individuals can vote on every single piece of legislation. Out of those 338, only five of them are leaders right now, unless we get, unless the PPC gets a seat or another party gets a seat. Right now, there's five leaders. Do the math. That means that 333 members of parliament voting their conscience um, have more power than the leader of any party uh, in these types of scenarios. So I would propose it is critical in this election that we do our homework and that we find out who our candidates are and whether or not we are in a swing riding. And if you are in a swing riding, this is kind of the bottom line for me. If you are in a swing riding that has a member of parliament that has exhibited a backbone and that, uh, or a candidate that has exhibited a backbone and that candidate has a chance at winning, do not split the vote by voting for a party that doesn't doesn't really have a chance of winning in that riding, according to barring a full on miracle, put it that way. OK, so uh, so I'm going to break this down a little bit more. But here here's some more of the list. Now, you might be looking at this saying, oh, my gosh, I wonder if my MPs are in there and I don't even know who my MP was. I got to look it up. Well, I've got good news for you. You can find this list at formycanada.ca. And if you go to formycanada.ca, there is a tab there up on the top that that says election 2021. And you just cl um, click down on that and there will be a drop down menu that says uh, gender side vote. Are you can actually just look. I think there's actually a big blue button right on the home page as well that gets you right into this exact page, which will show you the list of the 82 MPs that stood up on this issue that voted against how O'Toole and all the other uh, federal party leaders voted on this issue. They had a backbone and uh, they did the right thing on this bill. And the ones in the teal are the writings where you definitely do not want to split the vote. So that's why there's no paintbrush on this one, you guys. You've really got to do your homework. So how do you do your homework? Well, first of all, you got to find out who your MP is if you don't know or who your, your um, you know, what your writing is and, and that type of thing. Now, when I say MP, I, I mean um, who your former MP was. And then you, you, you take a look at this list. And if you don't see your former MP on this list of 82, then you know that they voted for gender side, they voted for um, the ability to abort a baby on the basis of its gender. They did not have a backbone on, on this particular issue. And so they probably won't have a backbone on other issues. And you just got to kind of dig deep and figure out how you're going to navigate forward on that. But how do you know if you are in a swing riding? Okay, how do you know if you are in one of those ridings that will probably determine 
the outcome of this election in terms of whether the conservatives form government or the liberals form government or some other party forms government. Um, the way that you will know if you're in a swing riding is going to this website right here, 338canada.com. So just uh, you can just uh, Google that and it'll get you right there. Uh, this is their uh, vote projection as of this morning. They're putting the conservatives at 33.4, putting the liberals at 31.9, NDP at 19.7, the block at 6.2, and the PPC at 4.6, and the Greens are under that um, somewhere below 4.6 4 today. Okay, so this is the overall. So we see how close this is right now. Those that are watching are saying that we're it, it's looking like it's going to be a minority government for either the conservatives or the um, liberals. Okay. I want to talk about going specifically riding by riding now. So um, there is a drop down menu on here where you can actually scan um, all ridings across uh, Canada 338. So once you know your riding, you can just scan for your riding and you'll be able to see where um, what's happening in your particular um, riding in terms of who's in the lead, whether or not it is a swing riding, et cetera. Okay. And so I want to show you this one, though. Okay, so let's talk about Max Bernier. This is actually really cool. This is really exciting. In Max's riding, now we know that Max has been one of the gutsiest leaders on issues of freedom, conscience, uh, pushing back on, on the group think on some of the policies over the past two years that have affected all of our lives. And he's been very bold and very gutsy. He, he would be right of the spectrum to the Conservative Party right now. He's actually got a chance to win. So I would say this, if you care about freedom of conscience issues, um, I don't know that Max is going to be the guy that takes it on the chin for the issue of life. Maybe not, probably not, but he he will allow people in his caucus, if, if anyone else gets elected, um, to vote um, for the issue of life and to vote their conscience. Some of his caucus members might not vote for life. They might be pro-choice, like I already said earlier in this video. But Max, if Max has a seat in the House of Commons, he will be pulling the entire conversation in the House of Commons further to the right on important freedom of conscience issues. So I would say, if you care about these issues, if you care about freedom of, of uh, conscience issues, freedom issues in general, and you live in both, <laughs> you live in this riding, most of us don't, I, I would suggest that voting PPC is actually probably not, not a bad consideration. As a matter of fact, if I was in that writing, that would be a consideration for me. And, uh, you know, you're, you're either going to get purple or blue in that particular writing. And so, so that, that one, you know, awesome. Okay, there we go. So let's, let's keep going. And, uh, you know, if you love freedom, uh, pray for Max, pray that he gets in. Okay, but I want to show, um, go back to Tamara Jansen. Okay, so Tamara Jansen was one of the ones that voted uh, for the issue of gender side, or voted against gender side, voted in favor of Kathy Wagon Tulsville. She is in uh, a swing riding. And the reason you know she's in a swing riding is because of how close the blue and the red line are in some some uh, graphs, it'll be the blue and the uh, orange line through between the conservatives and the NDP. When you have um, the two lead parties this close and one is conservative and one is liberal, this is where a vote for a, 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 a party that's polling lower, like the PPC, like the Green, like any other party, could actually split the vote and in that in that particular riding if you if you vote for one of the lesser parties parties that is voting lesser that reflects your values in essence you're transferring your power to to your opponent because um if if the 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 leading party that is more Leaning, leaning on the right on most of the issues. They might not be perfect. Actually, as a matter of fact, news flash, no party is, no candidate is. <laughs> um, you will actually be transferring by voting for the party that's polling near the bottom. You will actually be transferring your authority and your vote and your power to the party that you actually disagree with the most uh, through creating a vote split. OK, so if you are in one of these ridings, you need to really, really, really be careful and really consider deeply how you cast your vote, because it most likely will be the vote splitting votes that create a minority in this upcoming um, 
election result, uh, whether it's uh, for the Reds or for the Blues. So those are the ones that really need to do their research. And we would be happy to help you if you need any help navigating. The last thing that I want to say to you is there is something called a, a protest vote, okay? So let's say you're one of those people out there that are just saying, you know what, I'm just so disappointed with the Conservative Party. And I've seen shenanigans. I, you know, by the way, every party has shenanigans. But um, unfortunately, because every party has people that pull shenanigans, and that's not always the party elite. A lot of times it's people at the grassroots level, which will be another video we do after the election about the importance of getting involved at the grassroots level. But let's say you're saying like, you know what, I've just lost my patience with the conservative party. And I just want to make a statement. But I don't want to get a leftist party such as the liberals or the NDP in. Okay, well, if you're in a riding like this one, okay, so this is Perry Sound Muskoka. And Scott Atkinson, I, I, Atkinson, I don't even know if I'm saying this name right. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, I actually don't know Scott, and uh, I've, I've never had an interaction with Scott, but I do know that Scott was one of the ones that voted against Kathy Wagenthal's bill. Okay, so I personally, in this riding, because I care about that issue, I would have a hard time voting for Scott because I know that Scott's not going to represent my voice. He's not going to represent the things that I care passionately about. And he may not have a backbone on some of the other freedom issues as well. I don't know for sure. Uh, I would have to talk to him. And that's an important thing to do. And that's actually a biblical thing to do. The Bible does say talk to people directly. Right, guys? And so, um, so but I, I'm just giving you a hypothetical example here. But in this writing, based on Scott's voting record, I probably would vote uh, for PPC or another party um, just to make a point that there are people in this riding that are not on page with how Scott has voted and uh, in the past and, and to make that statement to the conservative party that there are people that actually care about these issues that some of the caucus and um party staffers kind of throw under the bus. Okay. So, you know, people, people in politics, right? So, so what is, what is my point here? So some of you might be watching this being like, oh man, I am so confused now. She has so lost me. The bottom line is, is you have to look at your specific riding. And I would suggest just to bottom line this, first of all, check out if your MP was one of the 82 members of parliament that voted for Kathy Wagenthal's bill. If your MP was one of the ones that voted for that bill, that means that they push back against Aaron O'Toole on that issue, which is a good thing. That means that they have a backbone and that means that they have been showing up, standing for great things, uh, honestly, um, before most of us were even paying attention to the process. And these are people I believe that deserve support. They deserve to be backed up. You know, if our MPs are going to stick their necks out for us, I believe that we have a moral obligation and a duty if we care about the issues that they stuck their neck out on um, to actually back them up in this election. So that's low hanging fruit. Just check out if one of your MP, if your MP, excuse me, was one of those 82. Um, if it, if they weren't one of those 82, the next thing is go into Canada338.com and find out if your riding is one of those critical swing ridings that will determine the outcome of this federal election. And if you are in one of those swing ridings where the blue bar and the and the red bar are neck and neck within, you know, I would say within five percentage points or even 10 percentage points, those are the ridings where you want to be really, really careful not to split the vote. Because if you vote for a party, for example, if you vote for PPC in one of those ridings, I'll just say it straight. If you vote PPC in one of those ridings, you are um, risking contributing to somebody getting in who um, will not allow people to fly from BC to Nova Scotia to visit their family after the election. You, you are voting for by, by, by defaulting your vote to the, the, the party that is lower uh, in the polls, you will be essentially creating a dynamic for for the liberals or the NDPs to shoot up in the shoot up the middle which event event essentially excuse me means that that you are voting for the the revocation of charitable status for crisis pregnancy centers uh just read through the entire uh liberal platform and you will see what you're voting for 
when you contribute to a vote split. Okay. And I wish it was easier. I wish, I wish I could just sit here and say, Hey, just everybody across Canada, just do this, do that. And there was just like one action point, but unfortunately there isn't because um, this election is so close and it requires each one of us to really do the work um, do our homework. And I've got good news for you. We have an organization that we have set up. It's called formycanada.ca. Am I still on share screen? I am. Hey, why don't we remove that? We've actually got uh, an organization we've set up called formycanada.ca. Just go to formycanada.ca. We are getting swamped right now with emails and we've got a, a little team there on the other side. This is the advocacy side of our nonprofit work that we do in Canada. And we would be happy to help you navigate all of this. Okay. So we'll help you find out if you're MP is one of those 82 will help you find out if you are in a swing riding. And if you're in neither of those categories, your MP uh, isn't running again. They weren't one of the 82 or they're not running again. They were one of the 82 and they're not running again. Uh, so you can't kind of hang your hat on that information. If you're not in a swing riding, you know, that's where you could potentially consider um, what we would call a protest vote or an ideological vote that will make a statement and hopefully keep the conservative party um very aware that there are people on the political spectrum that are to the right of what O'Toole would be exhibiting on some of his policy platforms. I think it would be amazing to have Max Bernier in the House of Commons, to have uh, a few PPC members in the House of Commons. And I want to throw this out there as well as we begin to close. And I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to see if there's any questions here as well in the chat. Um, but I do want to say this, remember that things can change in a minute. They really can. They can change in a minute on the other side of this. And, you know, there might be, you know, one of the possibilities that could happen is that if Justin Trudeau comes out with a minority, a stronger minority or a majority, it could possibly trigger another leadership race within the Conservative Party of Canada. And we could be heading into the next election with a, a different leader of the Conservative Party. That, that is a possibility as well. And if that's the case, you're going to want to make sure that you have those 82, or we're going to want to make sure that we have those 82 members of Parliament that have had a backbone in the past um, still there for that uh, important moment. Things can literally change in a minute, you guys. The other thing is, let's say that Max Bernier gets his seat, which I hope he does. I've said that a few times. Um, let's say Max Bernier gets his seat. First of all, he's going to vote on side with the Conservative Party on a lot of issues because fiscally on a lot of the issues, he's actually uh, well matched with the Conservative Party. The other thing is, is Max is going to be able to put forward some motions. He's going to be able to put forward some questions and he's going to be able to put forward a private member's bill if his number gets called. And you know what? That's going to give some of those 82 plus members of parliament within the Conservative Caucus an opportunity to vote uh, with Max on different issues that that Max might be bringing forward. And that will be a very interesting moment. The other thing is, is if um, Aaron O'Toole um, get, or if Aaron O'Toole gets in or he gets in with a, a stronger minority and ends up remaining as the leader and Max gets in and there are some strong, um, you know, pieces of legislation and motions that get brought forward. And let's say that Aaron O'Toole goes total LibCon. Like, let's say he just, or more LibCon, <laughs> let's say he just walks off the edge of policy in terms of issues of freedom and conscience. Um, let me just put it this way. There are some people within the Conservative Caucus right now that are more loyal to their values than they are to the Conservative Party of Canada. And if they have an option in the House of Commons, and if they are in the House of Commons, if you split the vote, they're not going to be. But if they are in the House of Commons and Aaron O'Toole shoots off the political radar to the left, some of those people will not blink an eye. They will cross the floor or they will go independent. And as a matter of fact, I spoke with a member of parliament just last week uh, who's running again, is probably going to get elected. And he said, you know, there, you know, this is the hill I'm willing to die on. I'm willing to die on the freedom, the freedom hill, the freedom for Canadians hill. And so if Aaron O'Toole doesn't remain conservative, I just want to say this. We need to get good people in. We need to get good people in, no matter what caucus they are from. We need to get good people in. We need to be careful not to split the vote so that we don't get the worst option in. And um, and we need to consider that after this election, 
anything could happen. We could be in a leadership race again for the Liberal Party, for the Conservative Party. We could we could see members of Parliament crossing the floor on issues of principle. But the only way you're going to see that is if you actually get them in. If you split the vote and you lose somebody incredible uh, like a Tamara Jansen, or, or or I'm just mentioning her because I mentioned her a few times uh, as an example, um, you know, these are the ones that we really need to back up because as history continues to write itself for our nation in the House of Commons, these are the ones that are going to make the difference. Once again, I want to remind us all that there are only 338 votes in the House. Of, there are 338 votes in the House of Commons. Only five of those are leaders. 338 members of parliament can push back at any time. And, and a caucus, you think of 82. <laughs> My gosh, I, I bet you could have heard a pin drop the day after Kathy Wagenthal's uh, or the caucus meeting after Kathy Wagenthal's vote. Because when you have 82 members of parliament out of 119 in the conservative caucus voting against Aaron O'Toole on an issue of principle and a conviction, that will impact the culture and the tone of any caucus. So, so everybody, I just want to, I just want to beseech you not, not to be, not to be foolish in this election. We, we cannot afford it. I've got two little babies, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old. I am absolutely grieved by what I've seen Justin Trudeau do to our nation over this last season, particularly with the federal debt. Uh, now, you know, going after people that are actually helping uh, single women, women that sing, single moms that need diapers, that need baby formula, that are running from abusive marriages. Like I'm absolutely grieved at what I'm seeing happen. I, I am not enamored by Aaron O'Toole's stance on the social issues, just as much as I'm sure many of you are not enamored. But I'm also not putting my my faith and my trust in Aaron O'Toole. I'm looking at my specific member of parliament who actually has a perfect track record on all of these issues. He's one of the few members of parliament that stood up and spoke um, against the expansion of assisted suicide in the justice committee who voted for Kathy Wagenthal's bill. And my member of parliament deserves my vote, even if my stomach turns a little bit when I see how the leader of the party has voted on different issues. So that's about as blunt as it gets, guys. So please don't split the vote. Don't be don't be, <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep my inside voice inside right now, but just don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Don't split the vote in those key critical ridings. Feel free to have a protest vote if you're in a riding where that's that's not, doesn't have a split the vote potential. Um, let's remind the conservative party that we want them to stay conservative. Let's believe that Max fits in. Let's continue to, to keep our prayer on, to keep our faith on, to keep our love on. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I know many of you guys have been in a um, 21 day fast. Just tip my hat to you. Let's continue to pray because, you know, man looks upon the outside, but God knows the heart. Let's continue to pray for the best possible outcome in every single riding across Canada for the sake of our children, for the sake of the vulnerable, for the sake of the most broken. Um, but you really have to be wise. This is not an election where we can just paint it all, paint every writing with one brush. So again, I want to say, if you want any help, I'd be happy to help you. I'd be happy to um, um, send somebody on to you. Oh, hey, John. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I felt so rambly, guys. I'm like 40 minutes into this. Uh, you know what did this to me? You know, I, you know why I talk so long? is because I did conferences for like 10 years. And at conferences, I always had an hour and half to talk. So, um, okay, there we go. Let me just see if, um, if, uh, thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to see if there's any questions here. Okay. So Kelly says after many years, the conservative party has turned the other way and done nothing to stop the slaughter. Well, I would ask you this, Kelly, and I don't mean to single you out, but since you posted, I would ask you this. Um, have you been involved at the EDA level? Have you gotten involved at your local EDA level and brought forward policies and been there to vote for policies in the Conservative Party? Because the Conservative Party is comprised of its members. And it was actually um, two um, policy conventions ago, I believe the Halifax Policy Convention, where there was actually a pro-life policy that lost by, I believe it was 103 votes. And so Kelly, if there would have just been 
52 more Kellys <laughs> in that room, 52 more that had a membership, bought a plane ticket, went to the convention and voted for that policy, then there would be a policy on the books right now that the Conservative Party will open it up. So, so this really lands actually with with us, with those of us that care about this issue, showing up, being in the room. And the other thing I want to highlight again is um, out of the, uh, in the in the last uh, parliamentary session, we did have Kathy Wagenthal's bill that in spite of the Conservative Party not having a pro-life policy on the books, they do still allow people to bring forward their own bills. Uh, Kathy Wagenthal pushed back and 82 out of 119 members of parliament uh, voted in favor of life. That is actually an overwhelming majority. <laughs> that is an overwhelming majority. If all the other caucuses, liberal NDP, would have voted uh, with that same ratio, that bill would have gotten passed. So um, so there you have it on that one. So I hope that helps you there, Kelly. But let's get involved because the Conservative Party is uh, made up of Canadians. Canadians like you and I, who for $15 can have a heck of a lot of power if that's the party that we feel called to influence. Let me see here if there's anything else. Okay, hi from Grandpa. There we go. Okay, I don't think there's any other um, overt uh, questions, but um, yeah. So yes, Christine, I will keep this long rambly uh, Facebook Live um, um, posted as is, I think it is. And I've also put links to all of the different screenshots, all the online resources for those screenshots are in the links um, in the description of this video. And um, also I'll be pop popping my nose back in here as I can, if there's any other questions that come down the line. Um, but you know, thanks a lot for watching this, you guys, on a Saturday afternoon. Bless you, bless your families, bless your loved ones, and please let's just keep this election in prayer. Let's pray that by God's grace in every riding, riding by riding across this nation, that we would truly elect the people that are anointed to govern our nation at this time and that will have a backbone. Also get out there and volunteer. I think we got 10 days left or nine days left before the election is officially over. Get out there and volunteer, particularly in those swing ridings. There's lots of them in the Toronto area, in the Vancouver area. There's one in Edmonton. There's some in the Atlantic regions. Get out there and volunteer in these key ridings um, in the last week here because that could be a game changer. I lost my nomination by eight. 86 votes and statistically just one or two more volunteers uh, in my nomination campaign really digging in with me and I would be on the ballot today. So you are amazing. You're powerful and you have the ability to be the change agent right where you are. So again, go to For My Canada uh, for those voting records on the gender side bill and also go to For My Canada if you want to sign up to volunteer in a key swing riding. Okay. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching.